What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in. This is Tom with Deep Video Live here with some people that I am very, very fortunate to be able to call my friends, old friends of mine from back in the day, the incomparable Rivers of Nile. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us for a little bit, guys. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So, you, you too, you. buddy. So let's get right into this. Um, you guys have gone through such an evolution of sound. It's been fascinating to watch pretty much since day one. And now I feel like you guys do kind of fall under the broad umbrella term of progressive metal, but that's such a, that's such an all encompassing uh, term. So I'm curious, what does the term progressive metal mean to you guys? And where do you see yourselves fitting into that? If, if at all? Um, I think, you know, uh, when it comes to like just the genre uh, name stuff for this band, uh, I, I've always kind of looked at it as like I, I don't really want to be stuck to anything, which is I, I know it's kind of like it's kind of tough for a lot of metal fans to deal with because they like to put things in little boxes. Um, but you know, I, I think we, we've gotten that label fairly over the, especially the last two records that we did because they're very more obviously like based on like the progressive movement of like the 70s in particular and stuff like that um but you know I, i've always wanted like wanted the freedom to be able to dumb that down or or just you know like go heavier or go you know i, I don't want it to be locked into anything in particular but i guess in that in that way that is the nature of like a progressive kind of kind of project so and you know the the metal aspect is you know very rarely if at all going to leave us you know so it's fair i'd say i'd say that's fair yeah i'll take that over take that over like because a lot of people like to just call us a tech death band a technical death metal band i don't i think that applies much less especially lately yeah it might have been the the story uh originally i remember you guys being very fast and technical and in your face and you guys still have segments like that i just checked out uh criminals before i came oh. over here and it's it's an ass beater but <laughs> you know it still encompasses the new direction that you guys are going in i think you found a really good balance so yeah, yeah man yeah i think that was a I think that was like kind of the goal with some of this new stuff is to kind of like, you know, take away the hard avant-garde feel of, of some of the last, last more recent material and then like try and like really find the, find the quickest, most effective route. Fun. So to tie into that, uh, what were some like unexpected influences that you guys had for uh, these last couple of records, especially this new one? Like everybody, everybody listens to metal. It's all good. But what's something that like people might not expect that you know, might have had an influence subconsciously or otherwise on the, the writing process for these new tunes? I mean, I mean, it's, it seems like such a generic answer at this point, but being locked up for COVID for, you know, however, how long it was and literally just at least musically for me just being locked in a room um with nothing to do for 18 months kind of was just i think the like the largest like unknown influence like it turned out to be the biggest influence overall on that material for me i think um than any like other band or, or anything like that just because you know a lot of the songs on that record are like very indulgent you know there there there's a lot of stuff on that record that just kind of like it's very clear that it was written during COVID. Like we we all think it's so obvious that it's like a COVID album because it was during that time that people were kind of just, you know, locked away with like nothing better to do than whatever it was that they were working on, you know, really working on. So uh, I don't know. I think just that whole time was a really it was like a really interesting time for the band and 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 yeah, everyone that's... obviously. Yeah, so. that's, a, that's a very good answer. It's not like any one thing. It was kind of just like an amorphous just situation yeah. that you found yourself in. I could point to some specific things like, uh, like you know, the, like the later era Bowie stuff was kind of, uh, um, you know, like that was, you know, something that might, like metal fans might not point to, but like that's kind of what inspired kind of a lot of the saxophone use in particular. And it works beautifully. It's been, you wouldn't have envisioned that from the, from the earlier works, but when you get to it now, you're like, fuck, it works. <laughs> yeah, it really does. And actually, I'm glad you met. Well, that's a weird thing to say. I'm glad you mentioned COVID. But uh, I'm curious, like, how things have uh, 
noticeably changed for you guys post COVID? Like how, how have there been any like workflow changes for you guys and have there been any noticeable differences in the scene? Because I know around here, it's made an enormous comeback. I, I came here the year before it all went down and had, had some great times, but then everything got locked down. There were a couple of like, no, no, shouldn't be doing it house shows, but that was about it. And then finally, like maybe end of 2023, Hey, 2022 and up to now it has exploded back but that's only here you guys are pretty well traveled what did the what have you guys noticed in your in your travels since you've been able to get back out i uh, i mean since i joined the band uh i've noticed just that people are really i mean as far as this like shows and stuff go people are definitely coming out again um i guess maybe i don't know i mean maybe people don't take as much for granted since then i mean but is there much of a difference i don't know what do you think i don't i i mean it's hard to say because uh, you know everything is everything's baked in like that but i know like because we did a we we were, hit the road on a pretty big tour pretty early on like i we mm. toured in we toured actually in the very beginning of 2020 and like right before it happened we were over in europe uh, like we probably infected the United States with it, <laughs> with COVID, <laughs> honestly. But yeah, it was us, we brought it, We're patient zero. Yeah. But uh, it, so that like going from that and then the big break and then what we toured with the Black Dahlia murder, was that 2021? That was September, 2021. Yeah. That was one of the first tours that happened. Yeah, that was like, that was one of those ones where everybody was like, oh, it's risky to go out. You know, it was like, it was like, I think it was like Delta was the big Delta variant big, at yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. So it, like, great strain. So that that all that considered, like those shows were awesome, like, huge explosive shows, and but like you know, there's still that lingering like everybody's got to be social distant. But they were like the people at those shows were like, no way, I ain't wearing a fucking mask. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. And it was like just crazy. And then but now it seems to have like evened out a little bit. And it's let like I don't even think people really think about it anymore. Really, no. Yeah, so we, which is crazy, all things considered, but it's more about like, I think it's more about the economy at this point. Like that's the big difference. I, th I think I might have, I think I might have lied to you guys. Uh, it is raining. And we're back. Sorry about that. It started raining, and I said it wasn't going to. I fucking lied. Sorry about that, y'all. Mm, but it, guy. <laughs> I, what, what do I know? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so my next question. I was actually gonna backpedal a little bit. Uh, I'm curious, be, uh, having known you guys for as long as I have and being able to watch this, I was curious, like, what was you guys' first, like, holy shit, I think we made it kind of moment that you guys had? And then uh, addendum to that, what would you say is the most recent one? Uh, I would say for me personally that when we sold out St. Vitus two nights in a row on the Owls headliner, I was like, well, this seems like it's going pretty well. I mean... I wouldn't say I felt like I made it, but it was definitely. You never do. It, yeah, you never, you never do. But like I would say that we started playing shows at uh, St. Vitus when we were the first band. I think our first show at Vitus it was Battlecross and uh, um, what's that other band that played? Battlecross and uh, I don't remember that. But yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, we played there like as a as a one of six and like kind of just really played a lot of shows at that venue over the years. And then when we finally came back and, and did two nights in a row and sold it out, I mean, that was definitely like a very cool feeling. It's not a big room or anything. No, but it, it, but no. it was cool because it was where we kind of came up. We played there more than we played in Reading, really. Yeah, I, feel, you know. I, I think like just the, the moment that kind of realized that like, you know, maybe this is a, a slightly bigger thing was just that we did this Canadian headlining tour mm -hmm. and like it was the first time we had headlined since we put out the Owls record and all, all of our headliners before then were you know kind of struggly kind of mid <laughs> like you Rain know the Rainbow the, tour <laughs> yeah. oh god I was there that was epic was yeah beautiful. yeah yeah but like it you know. sure was epic <laughs> <laughs> but you know it was like you know we were playing small bars and could barely get at bodies in the room most of the time and then you know we we go into this this canadian headlining tour for that record and we 
didn't really have super high expectations, but like kind of night after night, it was like, wow, the room is full. <laughs> like, yeah, like wow, feeling. that's interesting. And then you know, it's it's it felt it, since then it's felt like that our our name is kind of in the conversation in general a little more. As an outsider, that's what making it means, you know. Yeah, as an outsider looking in, it's it's pretty epic, man. Like you guys are in the lexicon. It's, yeah. I mean, it's good to stay humble and all that. That's, that, I feel like that attributes a lot to your, uh, or excuse me, contributes a lot to your success. But, yeah, as a, and I know my first moment was that show at the TLA, that one-off show with Morbid Angel. Where you oh, I remember. That, I remember. That, that was for me was like, oh shit, my boys are doing the damn thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I mean, there was stuff like way early on that we that we like felt like were big moments i guess yeah i mean like we, like i remember we played uh at the silo in reading with uh the faceless and dying fetus it was a co-headliner and the faceless were playing planetary duality straight through and like mm -hmm. i remember we sold like hundreds of tickets to that show mm -hmm. and we made like 40 dollars, of course but like uh we sold like hundreds of tickets to that show and like it was awesome like our reaction was awesome and like and we, we were straight up local band we were a local band morning. you know mm -hmm. but like we got to like meet some of the people in the like headlining bands and like they said nice things about us and we were like damn like it's a breadcrumb moment it like, was a breadcrumb but I, I think you know like more in the vein of like that TLA show another big one that we often don't really talk about is we like we did an opening right. slot on like just randomly went up to New York to play with Death, Death Hall yeah I like, remember that yeah and yeah, then we did the Death Hall tour like the next year yeah, so yeah. it clearly oh. was worth it so that yeah that's like kind of that's kind of a moment. little moments like that add up and you just you know that's how you do this thing. You just kind of... There's no... You, no, go ahead. Go there, there's very rarely... Like, for a lot of bands, I guess, it's like... Sometimes it's just like Snap, and like, they're hugely successful, but for a, for a band like us, it's just, you know... It's like, you say yes to the right things, and you, you just keep it going. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Jared? Have you ever had a... Have you had a holy shit moment in your tenure with this band so far? Yeah, I would say when we played the the festival run last like yeah oh yeah when we went to see. europe because uh, i i don't know i just wasn't expecting the crowds to be that big like yeah. but i mean i knew they were going to be, be like big but just like once you get on stage and see that crowd it's kind of just like oh shit okay that's true kind of kind of put things into like like a b even bigger picture uh and also i guess when we started touring with like a lot bigger bands as well like in, in uh, before the pandemic and especially after the pandemic I've yeah. been like wow this is a cool opportunity and we're working with a bunch of people that we've like all wanted to and have dreamt about and you know it's it's cool to see dreams unfold I guess that's yeah that's yeah. awesome I'm really happy for you guys man I really am and uh, that actually ties into my next question pretty good um, any advice for like smaller local bands that are cutting their teeth and like really have dreams of doing of doing the thing what sort of like good omens milestones like validations like what should they be looking out for that like maybe you don't think about it right away but like if this is if X is happening for you you know you're on the right path it's, it's kind of, that's kind of tough because every career is a little different mm -hmm. you know uh, and and like it takes you it takes a while to to like and it, I mean I wouldn't even say we have it totally figured out it takes a while to be like like these are our strengths this right. is the thing that you know we offer as a particular you know to the to the lexicon as a as a group and and what we should what we should lean towards and it's probably like way different from when we were younger like the things yeah. to look for now you know I don't know yeah I mean it's, the, it's the like industry's this, totally different yeah I mean like God, we started doing this in 09 and the scene is totally different yeah. you know and like it'll always change and like but, but like you know for some bands rolling with the times is kind of the way to do it other other bands it's like it's like you better you know stay the same no matter what and, yeah. it, and so it's, that's like recognize recognizing your strengths and what you know what it is that your band does well I mean yeah. we're completely fucking ignoring it like we do sometimes you know <laughs> Uh, that, that might be the key to it too is to maybe not let not let it go to your head and yeah. just keep it rolling yeah it's like it's so everything's so like there's so many components to this thing you know there's just there's you know down to like just showing up 
you know, right. being professional. I mean, like, is a is the p word is a, is an easy one to throw around, but like, and and like when you're a local band, it's hard to even know what that means. You can't fathom that. Yeah, but like, you know, don't, don't. I mean, like, you need like it's weird because you need an ego to do this job, but you can't have so much of one that it interferes with, you know, the nuts and bolts of things. I think that's pretty true for that's good life advice in general. Like, you, you need to. You need to have a little bit of confidence in yourself. You need to be able to, like, yeah, I am the shit. I, I'm good enough to get this done, but also you don't want to be a prick about it. Yeah. you you got to play ball, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And try to keep your footprint small in every way. Don't take up too much space. That's good advice. Yeah, if, yeah, if you're yeah, if you were going to talk about local band stuff, like, don't come in there thinking that, you know, don't, like, take up it like you're gonna use your wall of amps and your and your giant drum kit and just like take over the stage that night nobody likes that don't do a bunch of coke before your set if yeah. you have a if you have a co-headlining set to play unless I, you're I trying didn't. to play fast but, <laughs> and and completely forget what you're trying to do next i didn't i haven't done that anyway you guys have a so uh, another little pivot here Guys, got any good like juicy horror stories from on the roads and that, some of those? <laughs> nope. Where you were just like, Jesus Christ. One, one time, one time we were in, uh, one time we were in Canada, when we when the van flew off the road. And that was that was fucking crazy. Oh yeah. Like we like we were driving, we were leaving Regina, I think, or or maybe and, well, where was it? Was it Regina? Well, I, don't I think know. we were on our way to Winnipeg. We were on our way Regina. to Winnipeg, and like, <clears throat> it was like February and brutally cold, and like. There was just like a light dusting of snow coming down, yeah. but it was so cold that like those wispy things were like going across the oh, road. Yeah. And like he was driving, and like I don't know, he just. Left. I was going like 15 miles an hour, and then it just started ice storming out of nowhere, and then the whole the, rig, the just wind just blew, blew us, us off the road. Off the road, and the road was like up on like a big hill, so on either side there was like two big like ditches. Mm -hmm. So we our whole rig went down in this ditch in the snow, and like we hit, somehow hit didn't flip it. We hit a tree and like our our rig was fine. Our trailer flew around and hit the back of our of our uh, of our van. But uh, these uh, these people stopped and like with a big truck and they like helped us unload our trailer. And then we like we like what do we, how do we get it out of there? I well, forget. Well, well, we, we, we push had, it. We had to take every in in the middle of this icy snowstorm. Take everything out of our trailer. Walk it up to the road, and then we physically picked up our trailer and moved it like off of the van. And then we were able to, so, to somehow like finagle the van back up to the yeah. road and then reloaded our gear right in and then just kind of, you know, and then we pulled over on the side of the road somewhere and almost froze to death. Uh, that was a crazy <laughs> one too. That we, uh, we that were, was like the same thing. It may have been the same tour even. We were driving a long Canadian drive at night. Like it was like a 12 hour drive. And we just were so tired that we just pulled over at a rest, like all, off the side of the road. And we turned the van off, and within like an hour, we all just woke back up, and like it was like negative fifteen degrees in our van. We're, there was like ice forming inside of the windows, and inside. like and yeah. we were all just like we were all just like just shivering. from the con condensation of us breathing collected. Yeah. Oh, and it was just sure. like icing over completely, and like we we our va our van was very shitty at the time and like it was like is it gonna at start yeah, i mean at the time. Uh, <laughs> is it the is it the same band from no, that bus no, invaders no. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah yeah, 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 that, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah the, that was infamous wasn't it i've yeah. seen that hoopty <laughs> that, that's the one yeah beautiful beautiful vehicle the best vehicle old blue <laughs> but yeah i mean like just yeah the the road is a very dangerous place to live. Yeah, I, I, I have nothing against, uh, I have nothing against Canada, but I wouldn't go, I, I wouldn't go there in the winter. I don't know. It's, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. Thirty-five, like in the center of Canada. It's kind of crazy. To Canada. <laughs> it's not good. Well. Let's do a little more of a positive uh, spin on being on the road. Uh, what's we'll, tr we'll try. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what's one place in America that you guys always look forward to going to? Like, you're always pretty sure it's going to be a fun place. The people are cool. The scenes popping, and also like a place abroad. Like, what's what's one? What's a couple of places that like? Oh, we're going here. This is probably going to be good. I, I like playing. I like playing in the states. I like playing in Denver and Chicago, and in, in overseas, I like playing. Uh, I like playing London a lot. Yeah. Um, just the UK in general, I really like playing in the UK. Um, I mean, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Mexico, Mexico boy. Yeah, I mean, Mexico. Mexico. We, we want to go back yeah. to Mexico real yeah. bad. We did three shows with uh, Imperial Triumphant there last year. Yeah. And, like, it was, like, 
it was like one of the coolest experiences that I've ever had touring. Yeah, like we we felt like we were in the Beatles or something because like it was, those fans are really appreciative and yeah. and the shows were rad. And, yeah, you know, and awesome. just. I don't know, like experience that culture. It's like you go up to like a play, you go to Europe, and it's like it feels kind of vaguely what you're used to, but you know, just slowly but sure, surely, you're like, oh, these people's attitudes are a little different, and you can see the cultural change slowly. It's the same in Canada, you know, but then like it's you go to a play, and like Australia, it's it's very it's you know, you could kind of wake up, get knocked out, and wake up there, and until somebody open their mouth you really wouldn't know <laughs> that yeah. you might be in detroit or something well not maybe not detroit <laughs> but, uh, you know no it doesn't look like no that. no but uh, like mexico is just like it's like yeah this is this is different this is and diff. cool I, I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard they're pretty like fucking rabid over there like they yeah. really love it and they're dude. super nice yeah. and they're proud of where they live and they're proud of it's very interesting. yeah there's a lot of uh, like pride there all right cool uh what's a? Uh, you mentioned the uk uh, there's a lot of stereotypes about like shit, boring food over there, but I've heard that is not the case. Uh, uh, maybe. It, it kind of is. Um, the, the Indian food is good. Oh, well, the there's, Indian, a, there's the a curries. Hers. Yes, the well, curries are very good. Uh, the English food in general. Kebab. Um, kebab is good. Kebab is great. But kebab uh, is mostly German, though. Yeah, well, they have it in England. The German stuff is the is the shit, though. Canadian kebab is good as well, but yeah, British food, uh, it's kind of like the people. It's very boring and shitty. I'm just kidding. I love 1776, British motherfucker. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm, very, I'm kidding. I, I, love, I love British people. Ingested. We just toured with oh, them. Oh, God, They're yeah. Ingested guys. rule. I love those yeah. guys. The British sense of humor is, is I, 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 I dig that. I love the yeah, British. Yeah, I, I love those. I love it, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah they, they can take it. They're, they, they have pretty thick skin. They're, yeah, ball, they're yeah. ball busters. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. They're cool. Being from, like, the general Philly, New York, Northeast area, like, we we it's, we blend in with that. We're like, okay, I see what you're it's doing. It's a vibe. Oh, dude, like, yeah. Austin and Jess, I mean, they're from Manchester. And, like, yeah, they're, they're, that's, like, I don't know. Fucking slam in it. Yeah. 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 Fucking, yeah. Sure. Shout out to Lynn. Yeah, those boys are. Yeah, they rule. Yeah. So, all right, let's take it a little uh, closer to home. So, tell us uh, something about uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, that we, that uh, the people might know. I've been there a couple of times to to see you guys, and the impression that I got at the time was it it seems like it can be kind of a rough town, but it's also like oddly scenic. It's like one of the most beautiful mountain vista ghettos I've ever seen. <laughs> it's such a dichotomy there. So what's, what would you say something that's actually cool about there that some people might not know and what's something that, that kind of sucks? The people from Reading, Pennsylvania are incredibly loyal. Yeah. Um, I've made friends there that I know would do anything for me and I would do anything for them. Uh, you don't really get that everywhere else I find, but uh, the, the downside of Reading is that if you're looking for trouble, you can find it in about 10 seconds. I, that's that's the impression that I got. There were some people that looked me up and down and like, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah it was a, it, it's a little like, you know, I've I've been out of out of there for four or five years now, so I, uh, but moved to a slightly larger city and just uh, something a little more a little more low stakes about Reading. That's interesting, you know. Uh, it's a little insular. You meet a lot of people there who are like, "I live here, I will die here," you know, kind of vibe. And and like, there's the world beyond, complete mystery, and I don't care. And like, you know, we weren't really like that, obviously. But uh, you know, it's when you come from a place like that, it, it's 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 easy to propel yourself. But I don't know. It, it, it's also easy to just like have there's a lot of people around you just being like what are you you're late you're gone you're gonna go yeah you're gonna go to that place what are you doing that for what's gonna happen when you go there yeah. <laughs> we're like i don't know but that's the fun of it I, yeah i remember when i moved to arizona i had a bunch of people going like you're gonna be one of those people <laughs> and i was like yeah i guess so i don't know what that yeah so that is true he's right about yeah, that. yeah i'm gonna be one of those people that lives in arizona yeah. yes yeah all right. all Arizonans. jared what do you think about reading pa yeah. uh it's terrible <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh it i don't know it kind of it's like a less lit up reno I guess. Yeah. Like, because it's, because just like what I've been to said. Reno, and that's that's a that's actually a surprisingly apt comparison. Well, that I mean, that's where I'm from, and oh, yeah. yeah, so like it's like four hours from the ocean on for both cities. So like, I don't know. 
you're looking for trouble, you can find it real quick, just like Andy said. And it, it is beautiful. I think it's beautiful, the, the hills and all the trees and different leaves and all the colors and stuff. Yeah, like it's that. gorgeous in the fall. Yeah, yeah. That's true. The Northeast has that in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool scenic routes and, you know, seeing all the farms. And it's like, I mean, it farms are everywhere and stuff, but like, Nothing's like Reading, you know. And I, I actually have a little bit of a family history in, uh, in Reading. I've, uh, you guys know the pagoda, right? Of course. No. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but uh, I think it's either my great grandfather or my great great grandfather. Somebody in my family what helped build that pagoda back in the day. And if you go somewhere up on there, you'll see you'll see his name carved in where they have all the other names. It, it may very well have been. I don't know. I don't know if Curtis partied like that, but he may, he may have. His name was Curtis. You're, you're, yeah, you're Reading royalty. <laughs> that's what that's what it is, right? Yeah, he built the pagoda, dude. <laughs> dude, he, dude, he built the the pagoda there. Did, did he? I know he, he to, built the pagoda. Yeah, he went and got his hoagies, and then he went fucking down the shore. Dude, he went. He went. He went, went, he went up. To, he went up to the uh, wall. He went up to the wall at the pagoda and yeah. got a hoagie with cheese on it. Guys, <laughs> guys, want, guys, want some fucking water ice? Some, some fucking water, water ice. ice yeah, yeah. We're, he's going to read his after school day. <laughs> guys, want a pretzel, go birds. Go Get birds. it, go birds. For real though, go birds. Oh yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we stand the birds around here. So, actually, Adam, I'm glad you mentioned uh, moving out and getting out of there because my next question is uh, specifically for you. I'm uh, curious about how one balances a band like this that's as successful and active as it is and also your family responsibilities because I know you're your family man now. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. But, uh, yeah, so... What's the what's the reality of that situation look like? I imagine it's not all glamorous, but clearly a balance has been struck. It, it's 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 an ongoing process. It's very difficult to thing to you know reconcile. But you know you got to be lucky enough, like I am, to have you know a, a partner and family members that are uh, proud of what you do. You know, and they you know they. So as much pride in how seriously I take the band, it's like the, my family is, you know, rooting for me. And they, you know, even my two-year-old son is just like, you know, watching our music videos. Orange Dada. Orange Dada. Yeah, orange yeah, Dada. he's had the, vi the new video for Criminals. He just sees me and goes, Orange Dada. Orange Dada. <laughs> that, and do we, do we just get a look into the, the next album title? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, be in jail yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't get too used to that imagery. But uh, uh, yeah, Jailbird like Jailbird Biggs, <laughs> <laughs> old uh, Uncle Jailbird Biggs. <laughs> Uncle Jailbird Biggs. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, it's 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 hard. It's very hard, especially because I have two very young children, and uh, you know, just from getting childcare together for when we do these kind of things, and just like being really present when I'm at home versus because it's you know this this thing takes as much work off off the road as it does on Absolutely. and you know it can i treat you know i it's also like i gotta i gotta do a day job thing when i'm at home i gotta do you know i gotta you know be a good dad i gotta spend half my time also you know just watching kids and doing doing the just straight up dad thing i stay you stay up on you know being able to play our material, work on new stuff, you know, like just all the litany of things that go into it. And, you know, it, it's, I, I'm still fairly new at it. Like I, today's, <laughs> I'm on the road. Today's my three year wedding anniversary. Congratulations, man. And, and you know, it's hard cause you know, I, again, having a partner that really understands and is proud of what you do is, is essential, you know, cause this is, out of three wedding anniversaries, this is the second one I've missed, you know, like being out on the road, but yeah. I think Christmas is the only holiday that we've never missed. Yeah, and barely. And I mean, very close. Bir bir birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, pretty much every single one except for Christmas. I've missed, I've missed. Funerals. Like, yeah, I've missed them all. Like, every Thanksgiving we're in Germany. Everyone. Oh, it's that soft. that is true. That is true. that's the yeah, worst. That is true. Is it, yeah, but is that a good thing or a bad? No, 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 not at all. Thing. No. It's such an exclusively American holiday, and yeah. like everything that you like about Thanksgiving, eating turkey, hanging out with your your folks, just like you know, all that all that stuff doesn't exist anywhere else. Schnitzel. 
Oh, you get cold shit and gold goulash. Things Ugh. that look like things that aren't things and they taste like a, crap. Yeah. <laughs> a, ba- a bag That's of your European food for you. Like you can't, you're telling me you can't talk the Germans into, hey, guys, come on, let's let's cook a bunch of food and Have chill. Have you tried talking Germans into anything? <laughs> not, not, <laughs> rec- yeah. not recently. No, no. It, it, it ain't getting far on Thanksgiving over there. Sucks. Well, I wish you I wish you all the best, man. I know that's that's an unspoken reality for a lot of bands that uh, that doesn't doesn't get talked about enough. But uh, you, you know, it takes a certain breed to to make that happen. And you know, big kudos, hat tipped. Yeah, wish you all the success. And I got I just got one last question. Then we'll wrap up here. We'll uh, get uh, get on with this show. So, uh, do you guys think at any point do you ever see yourselves going back and playing the uh, playing the old material, or at least in a live setting, or is that chapter? pretty much closed for good because don't get me wrong love what you're doing now and keep it going but i have and i'm not alone i have a big soft spot for the first couple of albums monarchy in particular that's one of my favorites but so do you guys ever see yourselves coming back to that or is that is it full steam ahead now sure i mean like we've lately like we've uh we've played sand baptism that's like a regular staple in the set yeah a bunch yeah yeah, and and Mon- monarchy was played like oh, have we played that? On yeah, the it's second? been it's been a while yeah, since we played. Play that song. Yeah, yeah, Andy. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'll but we, learn it. We play we <laughs> we play soil and seed pretty regularly. Yeah, soil's now. regular. Yeah, like yeah. like we're doing some off days on this one, and like that's part of that set. So I'm not you know nothing's necessarily off the table, but like sometimes we go back to some of the er- like early stuff, at, like especially especially like the conscious seed of light era, and like we've talked about resurrecting a couple of those songs and we go to play the riffs and i'm like oh this stinks <laughs> like it, it's very like it's like it's like i feel like i'm playing high school riffs right now kind of like it, it i don't know it but again nothing's off the table yeah no i mean i think yeah i mean soil will definitely stay like a regular yeah stable. there's a couple winners here there's, and there. there's a few on the first record that i could see coming back at some point but I personally would play any almost anything off of Monarchy, but it's just you know. I think it would also be cool to play like Synchronos, but I don't think anybody would like know what that. So was. am I? So am I hearing right that there might be a Sea of Neurons encore tonight? <laughs> oh my god! You can play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all you need. Let, let me go do a bunch of coke, maybe. Give me, give me ten thousand dollars, and I will learn every river song by the time we play it. Yeah, we'll, our, two, our people will call your people. We'll make. We'll make. I'll do it for ten grand. All right. A lot of those riffs are. Lost at yeah, <laughs> the time, it's, like yeah. lost. All right. Ten grand, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, so uh, you know what? We'll talk. My people, we'll call your people. Yeah. But guys, thank you very much for taking the time. Looking forward to seeing the show tonight. It's been great catching up with you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank so, you. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. All right, so you like what you see? Like and subscribe. Yeah. Deep video live. Go birds. Go birds. Go birds. Go birds. All right.